A 200 megapixel camera. Is that something that really matters? Well, the S23 Ultra is looking more and more likely that Samsung's going to shove one of those suckers into their phone. As if 108 megapixels is not enough, you need 200 megapixels. Now, I don't want to downplay that, yeah, that's not a cool thing. I mean, shoot, 200 megapixels. I remember the first ever digital camera I ever bought was 1.3 megapixels, and that cost me a lot of money. I went on a deployment 2002, went all the way around the world, went to a small little country called Oman, and I wish I still had photos from back then. They got lost in translation years ago, but 1.3 megapixels. And now we're talking about a 200 megapixel camera on a phone. And it's not like this is science fiction. It's already been done. The exact same sensor has already been put in the Xiaomi 12T Pro, which I just looked at a couple of weeks ago. So the S23 Ultra largely rumored to have that exact same camera. Is it a gimmick? Does it matter? It's pretty much a gimmick. <laughs> uh, not, not that it won't be a good quality camera. And that's not the thing that I want you to walk away with here. But I wish that Samsung would double, redouble their efforts and come back with something that actually enhances the user experience. So I, I even did some research to try and see if maybe it was just me that thought it's kind of useless. And largely most of the stuff that I've read confirms that it's useless to have that many megapixels in a camera. We don't even need 108. And from what I was reading, of course, this has been a long, long fought over argument. How many megapixels do you need in a camera? How big of a resolution do you need on your screen? Does it matter if it's 1080p versus Quad HD Plus? Because largely after about 300 pixels per inch looks lifelike. So if you're looking at an image on your screen at 300 pixels per inch, well, most phones with a Quad HD Plus screen are at like over 500 pixels per inch. So that's not really a whole lot of an argument anymore. But when you look at an actual image, megapixels matter. And I actually did learn something. I didn't know that the mega was actually short for million. So when you talk about 200 megapixels, you're talking about 200 million pixels in one image. Well, yeah, you're right. You can hardly fit that onto a screen because the pixels get so, so, so small. And so do so does the, the sensor, the little whatever it is. I can't remember what it's called. I was reading an article, but basically what picks up all the pixels and converts that over to the sensor, those get smaller and smaller and smaller and it makes it harder for the camera to actually work. So whenever you talk about megapixels or millions of pixels, when you blow up an image, you need a lot of pixels because as they get bigger and bigger, this is something we ran into when we had cameras that were shooting five megapixels, eight megapixels, they had their limitations because you needed basically, and I'm just going off the top of my head here, like don't come back to me, the, pho the photography society and crucify me for saying the wrong thing, but if you wanted to blow up a photo, basically, let's say you needed an 8 megapixel camera to blow up an 8 by 10 image. If you went over 8 by 10, you went to 10 by 12, it started looking less than lifelike. And of course, the object is lifelike. So if you've got a 200 megapixel camera, let's say it does another thing. So a big thing lately has been called pixel binning. They call it super res zoom, and this is actually something that some cheaper Android phones employed years ago, and then a lot of the more expensive ones started doing the same thing and coming up with all these super res zoom, super zoom, all sorts of crazy different names for it. Pixel binning. We've seen a lot of quad pixel binning. So even if you look at, let's say, the Pixel 7, 7 Pro, you look at the iPhone 14 Pro, Pro Max, they do quad pixel binning, meaning they effectively, they can put four pixels in the position of one, and it makes the image... Supposedly, I think it makes it more rich, but if you zoom in, you have less loss. And this is something that we ran into for years. You would take a good photo, and then you would start zooming in, and then as you zoomed in, you would you would not have the same level of detail. So this does give you that, but let's say we bend it down. So if you look at the brand new, brand spanking new iPhone 14 Pro Max, 48 megapixels, it normally shoots photos, and it bends that down to 12. So 48, divide that by four, you get 12. Effectively, you're still shooting a same 12 megapixel photo you were shooting with previous iPhones, except you can zoom in a little bit better. Well, you get roughly the same thing with the Pixel. It bends down to about 13 megapixels, which is kind of what they were doing before. So you're getting the same rough output on an image. So moving that up, let's say we scale that up. We'll dial it up to 200 megapixels. If they do that same quad pixel binning, you're basically shoving four pixels inside the same image. You're getting a 50 megapixel bend photo. Okay, if you wanna print out a 50 megapixel photo, it's gonna be like a wall poster. I, I don't know exactly how big, but 
when you're looking at it on the phone, is there any tangible benefit? Basically, no. I mean, you can still zoom in, you can zoom in better, you can crop in better if you need to crop a photo and not lose detail, but 200 megapixels is just off the reservation. So whenever I took a look at the Xiaomi 12T Pro, yeah, it took perfectly good photos. Was it the best photos in the world? No, it's not. And this, this is not going to guarantee the best photos in the world. If you could come out and say, okay, we're going to do something with our phone. We're going to do something with our smartphone camera that makes it the best in the world. That's great. But a 200 megapixel sensor is not going to do that. They're just scaling up craziness to the nth degree. And I very much disagree with this position. So it's just a selling point. I mean, shoot, the iPhone just bumped up to a 48 megapixel camera in their pro model which again still bends down to 12 megapixels. So yeah, I, I don't really see how this is going to make anyone's phone experience better. And I think that this is largely something that Samsung started a long time ago. Like I remember when we got the first 40 megapixel camera or 48 megapixel camera, there were a lot of phones that were doing some really good stuff with cameras and it looked better. I mean, it was an optics thing because when you had Microsoft, they came in, you got the Nokia, the Windows phone, the big camera, and I think it was like 48 megapixels or 50 or 100. I can't remember what it was. But it took pretty good, pretty darn good photos. And that was great because, well, it was doing it at a time when a lot of other people were taking 8 megapixel, 12 megapixel, 11 megapixel. But it wasn't necessarily the megapixels that was doing it. It was just a good camera. And it was Nokia. And it had the Zeiss lens and all sorts of great stuff. So you can do things with a camera that make it take great photos. You don't need a 200 megapixel camera. So I think it's just a justification for cost. And of course, Samsung likes to be perceived as the king of the megapixels because right here, they've been doing it for years with this 108 megapixel camera. And yeah, that's great, but it's really not doing you a whole lot of good. So I would like to see Samsung do something meaningful to make the phone experience better. And it's largely just a product of its own environment because they've been playing these games for years what are we going to get next? A thousand megapixel sensor? It's not, I'm not going to put that beyond Samsung or Xiaomi or anybody else, but it will do you no good unless you're trying to print out a life-size version of the planet, right? I mean, you don't need that many me megapixels. It does nothing for you other than drive up costs and give you this perceived better than other camera cap like thought process. It's just not there. You're not going to get any tangible meaning from it. So I would say Samsung do something like reinvent something on the smartphone that's not giving you more megapixels on the camera. And when you look at smartphones, we've been talking about this for so long. It's saturated, it's saturated. We've reached peak smartphone. They're boring. Nobody cares anymore. And phones are making them their own selves obsolete. We're already away from this year over year upgrade cycle, which I mean, I know tech enthusiasts like me like to do. We still like to go out there and buy the latest and greatest phone because it's cool, it's neat, it's trendy, it's got the new got the new smartphone chip in it. I mean, of course, it's it's going to be so much better, right? No, mostly just people who are addicted to technology like me. So you don't get a lot of normal folks going and upgrading their phone year over year, especially not when the phone costs $1,000, 1100 $1,199. That's a lot of money. Like, that's a whole lot of money. And of course, Samsung makes it as lucrative as possible because they're like, oh, we'll give you like a grand for your old one. Heck yeah, I'll do that deal any day of the week. But that's going to reach a point at some where it's unsustainable at some point because what are you going to keep doing? You're going to give us another 15% extra power, five more extra megapixels, and you're going to extend it. And you're going to cover it for six years. That was kind of the bread and butter for Android phones for the longest time was your phone was going to suck after about 12 to 18 months. So you needed to get a new one, especially if you were not, especially if you weren't getting a flagship one, heaven forbid, five, six years ago, you got a, cheap series phone, that sucker was not going to see an upgrade. It was going to be, that was basically what you see is what you get. And it wasn't a good, that good of a phone. The phones are so amazing now that yeah, the hardware should last five years, ideally. And that's what they're supported for. Uh, and unless of course you want to talk about the battery problem with the bloating, uh, <laughs> the bloating batteries in some of the older Samsung phones. I think that we're probably not going to see that with the newer models because of the battery technology. But I mean, it's something worth discussing, but yeah, this whole 200 megapixel gimmick just shows that there's no original thought left when it comes to trying to innovate in the smartphone space. They already took away the Note. They consolidated it with the S22 Ultra. We're going to see the same thing with the S23 Ultra. What else are you going to do? I don't know. I don't, that's not my job. My job is just to talk about, is it any good? Is it worth it? Is it of value? Is it something that you should go out and get? 
That 200 megapixel camera is not a selling point. Now, the S Snapdragon 8 Generation 2, yeah, we can talk about that. I mean, that might be worthwhile because some people weren't happy with the battery performance on the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. Maybe that's worth some merit. I mean, it's always great to have more power, less heat, and better performance. We can talk about that. But a 200 megapixel camera, I just don't see how that's going to be revolutionary other than just trying to revolutionary take more money out of people's wallets. I mean, that's that's it. That's all I can think of. So that's all I've got. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, send off in the comment section. We can talk about it. We can talk about the merit of this possible decision and if they don't do it then cool but i mean what are they gonna what are they gonna hang their hat on so this is not confirmed i, I just want to say that it's m largely confirmed i think most people are pretty much leading and pointing in the rumors department to it happening but hey we've seen rumors that haven't happened before but if it doesn't happen this time it's gonna happen next time it, it's pretty much inevitable i think at this point that we're gonna see a 200 megapixel sensor in a samsung phone likely it's looking like it's probably going to be the S23 Ultra. So we'll see what happens, but that's all I got. If you have any questions or comments, and please go to the comment section. I will get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, if you like this stuff, then please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.